Hey there guys and welcome back to Pokemon Ruby. I know that this was supposed to go up yesterday, but I made the video, checked it, and it was all corrupted and frozen and whatnot. And because stupid old me forgot to save for the project file, I had to re-narrate the whole damn thing. Sadly, I found out about the video messing up at like midnight, so no chance to re-narrate it then and there. So we have to do it today. And can I just get by that trainer unnoticed? Come on, look the other way, asshole. Ah, oh, crap. It's probably a zigzagoon, of course. It's always a bloody zigzagoon. Well, I'm sure Dustox can run away from those just fine. Alright, keep looking that way, asshole. Thank you, stupid kid. What is this? Another zigzagoon. Why am I not surprised? Especially zigzagoon, go away. No one likes you. Alright. Oh crap, it's me. Hey, long time no see. Pokemon grew stronger, how about a little battle? She doesn't even offer you a choice. You can't say yes or no, so you just... No, oh, here we go, battle. Oh, you only have three? I have... Ooh, a Whalmer. Nice. This is the first we've seen of those. Now, Whalmer is a... It's kind of average, a water type. The only thing it has going for it is it's high ass HP. I mean, it has a lot of health. I think it's evolved form. Waylord has like the third or fourth highest health of all Pokemon. So that's pretty good, but if you can just poison the Whalmer, you should be fine. Oh crap, it has rollouts. Oh, I can actually take that quite well. Alright, let's see how this is gonna. You know what, we're gonna switch to Makuhita, because Makuhita resists rock-type moves like Rollout. And can probably take it out pretty easily with a Vital Throw, because Wilmer's defenses are nothing to write home about. It's very high HP is kind of balanced by its below-average defenses. And, aw oh crap, oh, Poison should take it out. Yes. Perfect tag team by Dustox and Makuhita. So what do we have next? A Numel. Oh, we fought those before, and Marsh Tom will just take care of those in one fell swoop. Easy as all pie. That was kind of... Nah, never mind that. So, one water gun, and Numel bites the dust. Poor Numel. Alright, and a Grovile. Grovile is the evolved form of our starter Pokémon, Trico. And it's a grass type, so Talo should be able to deal with it pretty easily. Even if it is level 20 and probably a lot stronger than Talo. Huh, actually took that quite well. And yeah, if I can just live this attack. Crap. Oh, he's gonna pursue me again? I should live that. Yes. Ah, no way. Lame. Alright, Dustox then. Because Dustox also has some flying moves, and poison moves, which also work. And the defense is to live anything that Grovile throws at it. Alright, kind of a bummer that Talo didn't pull through. Should have gone for wing attack the second time instead of quick attack. I don't know why, I was expecting to use some kind of move that would knock me out, I guess. Oh well. A reward, an item finder. That thing is hardly ever useful, let me just start by saying that. Very much you use it and you hear like beeps if there's an un like an invisible item nearby. But those items usually aren't worth the time anyway. And okay, now we can fight this kid. I mean we still have plenty of Pokemon left after our little scuffle with me. So youngster Timmy. Poochiana. Oh, Makuhita just eats those up for breakfast. Yeah, you can howl all you want, but I'm still gonna kick your ass. Or throw your ass, because that's what Makuhita does. I don't really think Makuhita is much of a kicking Pokémon. Because it can learn quite a few fighting moves, but... None of them are kicks, I think. I mean, other fighting types like Hitmonlee and Machop and... Meditite and stuff, they all learn high jump kick or low kick or whatever. Makuhita does not learn any of those. Although I do think Makuhita and, and its evolved form can learn low kick through uh, 
move tutor in hard gold or soul silver or something. Because pretty much every fighting type can learn low kick using that move tutor. Anyway, he also has an Electrike, which Marsh Stomp just eats up. Because... Wait, is this the first Electrike we've seen? I think it actually is. So Electrike is an electric type, as its name oh so subtly gives away. And you can actually catch it in the grass around here, but I wouldn't really advise it, because Electrike is not that great. To be quite honest. Its evolved form is alright, but... It's really hindered by a really small move pool. And I say there are better electric types out there. Also, not to mention the fact that once you catch Electrike at level 12 or 13 in this route, it will not know any damaging electric type moves and will not learn any for quite a while. I actually remember using an Electrike on a previous run, and the first electric move it learned was when I use the TM on it that I get from the next gym, which is an electric type gym, by the way. So, yeah. We're, speaking of that gym, we're pretty close to it, we just have to run through this grass here, and then we're basically there. And another zigzagoon. Why are those things so common? I mean, they should know by now that I don't want one, so just stop giving them to me. Ooh, and that guy there, he is a collector or a super nerd or whatever. Some kind of those trainer classes. And I think this one is actually pretty easy training material for Talo. Because he has a Lombre, which is the evolved form of Lotad. If you haven't figured that out by now, due to the whole lily pad thing. Alright, that's easy experience, level 18. Nice one, Talo. And a Nuzleaf, which is the evolved form of C Dot. Even though Nuzleaf does not really look like C Dot whatsoever. I mean, what would you expect an acorn Pokemon to evolve into? Like, maybe some kind of tree down the line or something? No, it evolves into some kind of weird black kid with a mask and a pointy nose. Basically, it becomes Black Pinocchio. And it does apparently refuse to attack me, just wants to boost its own stats all day. That's fine with me, I'll just kill you while you're doing that. Ah, Nuzleaf. You're so creepy. Alright, so much for Collector Edwin. Wait, he has four Pokeballs on his belt, and yet he only has two Pokemon. Why would he keep empty Pokeballs on his belt? You there, I'll fight you. I think all she has is like an Abra or a Meditite or something, because she is a Psychic. Wait. The name's Edward, so I guess it's a he. Sprite kinda looks androgynous though. Oh well, it's an Abra. Abra has pathetic defense, so anything can like take it out in one hit. Yeah, screw you, androgynous Edward. I think he's the Edward from the Twilight movies. At least I think the vampire was called Edward. No, anyway, here's a Gulpin. A somewhat rare poison type. And I would advise against using one because they are kind of worthless. I mean, Gulpin's evolved from Swalot is mediocre at best. It's kind of like meant to be a wall, but it does not have any recovery moves. And its offenses are kind of bad as well. Just use Grimer or Muck or Coughing or Wheezing if you want to use a Poison type. Just skip on Gulpin altogether, not worth it. Anyway, Fisherman probably has a bunch of Magikarps again, or a Tentacool which is severely out-leveled by my Talo. So we will just take it out with a single wing attack, because Tentacool is about as bulky as a paper bag on the physical side. And hey, another Whalmer. Uh, let's put Makuhita in there, because Whalmer's rollout will wreck Talo. But it won't wreck Maku. Ah, don't be like that. Frickin' growl. Maybe you need to start bulking up. Yeah, that's bulk up. I mean, I'm pretty sure a water gun isn't gonna do anything. Uh, I can take a few of those. Probably enough for me to take him out. So there we go, my attack's back to normal, my defense is boosted. And he uses an attack that I resist. Whoa, two damage points. How horrifying. 
Alright, Vital throw to the face, and Wilmer is out of there. Gotta love how Makuhita can throw a Wilmer, because... Wilmer's sprite might not reflect it, but... Wilmer's actually pretty damn big. I think the Pokedex lists its size at, like, six foot something. So, that's a huge-ass Pokemon. It's, like... At least two times the size of Makuhita. I think Makuhita's, like, three foot something. Although, I do think Wilmer is not really that heavy compared to Makuhita. I think it's, like, mostly supposed to be some kind of beach ball or air balloon whale. And it weighs a lot less than you'd expect. And stop it with the supersonic dust dogs. Just wipe out the ten cool already. It's really not that hard. Okay, snap out of confusion and use confusion. How does that even work? Oh man, I'm so confused. I can't use confusion because I'm too confused. Now I'm confused. Eh, well. Another tentacool. Why would you want to carry on three of the same Pokémon with you? Like, what could this tentacool do that the others can't? Apart from annoy my ass with Supersonic again. Uh, come on, confuse him, confuse him. Nope. And Poison Sting. Seriously, I four times resist that. Even a critical hit only does like three damage points. So, come on, just hit him. There we go. Because the next gym is waiting for us. We don't have time for this nonsense. So, go die in a hole, Tana Cool. And Dustox is level 19. And he still pretty much sucks ass. Offensively, at least. Let's see. Here we are. Next city, Morville City. Ooh, a little Pokeball thingy there. I want to get that. It is an X Speed. Great, we find drugs. They were in the ghetto side of Morville City. Seriously, kids, don't do speed or meth or crap like that. It's not good for you. Nor your wallet. And you really shouldn't be hanging with that kind of crowd that uses speed and meth in the first place. So yeah, there we go, my educational segment for today. And let's put Marsh Stomp up front. Let's go and curb stomp the frickin' gym. Oh look, it's Wally! You wanna challenge the gym? Uh... Fine, as long as you just let me cut in line. I'm not pushing it, that's what she said. Nah. Oh hi, and I just... I've been listening here for five minutes and now he notices me. Jeez. Uh, sure, I'll kick your ass, Wally. If I beat you, then you won't be able to challenge the gym anymore, and then I'm first in line. I'm so brilliant. Uh, wait. How exactly do you want to challenge the gym with only one Pokémon? Crap. Pressed A too soon, even though Tackle still wrecks the shit out of that Ralts. And I do think it knows offensive moves by now, so... Yeah, another Tackle. There we go. Job well done. And you actually thought you could beat the gym with that. I don't even think you'd be able to beat the first gym. Though we might stand a chance against Brawly and his fighting types, because Ralts does have the type advantage over those. Being trainer is tough, isn't it? Well, if you only have one Pokémon, it is. And now he's all depressed. We are crushing his hopes and dreams. And I really don't give a damn. You must be the trainer of Captain I for only when he caught his Pokémon. Yes, I was. Visit him in Verdant Turf Town, which is pretty much the next town over. Even though we really don't need to go there yet. But... Yeah, I think I might go ahead and do some training, because the gym... Actually has quite a level advantage over me. Still. So, yeah, a little bit of training. Does this aroma lady boost Talo up a few levels. Even though Talo is pretty much the worst Pokémon you should be using against this gym. Because... Ah, oh, that just blows. Mega Drain. Well, that shouldn't do that much, and I can probably just... Say F you to the Paralysis and just take him out with a Quick Attack next turn. Because Quick Attack negates all speed, disadvantages like Paralysis, and just takes out anything. And, ah oh man, almost level 19. But this Roselia should do the trick. Creepy Roselia. And personally, I feel that Roselia has been introduced in the wrong generation. 
Look, Roselia is pretty much a standalone Pokemon in Generation 3. No pre evolutions, no evolutions. Just nothing. And then in Generation 4, Roselia gets a pre evolution and an evolved form. It's like. Huh. So, couldn't you just have, uh, I don't know, just kept off on introducing Roselia? Did you put Roselia in Generation 4? Or put Badu and Rose Raid in Generation 3? I mean, they obviously, I think they were working on some of the Pokemon in Generation 4 already when Generation 3 came out. I mean, uh, Shellos and Gastrodon were supposed to be in Ruby and Sapphire originally. But we're kept out of it for some reason. Oh well, this guy has a Magnemite, everyone's favorite electric and steel type. Yeah, Magnemite and his evolved form Magneton have actually been one of three Pokemon to ever have their types change between generations. Like, they were pure electric types in Generation 1, and when Generation 2 came around and introduced the steel type, they were kind of like retcon to be electric steel types. Which. Improved them, I guess. They got a crap load of resistances from it, although they do have a four times weakness to ground that is very exploitable. Seriously, they will not survive a ground move. Whatsoever. And if you're wondering what Pokemon is the third one that changed types between generations, it is the, uh, the appliance forms of Rotom. They were all electric ghost types in Generation 4, but when Generation 5 came around, they pretty much removed their ghost type and took on the secondary type that their special move pretty much provided. Like one's electric grass and electric fire, electric water, electric flying and electric ice. Instead of all being electric ghost. Which I guess works for them. But also against them because they're no longer immune to normal moves. Oh well. Time to heal up the Pokemons, and the training will continue next week on Pokemon Ruby. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.